What up, what up? It's Pastor Dustin with... Miss Kendra. Guys, the wait is over. It is here. Our brand new Fun Friday series starts right now and it is on... The Armor of God. That is right. God, we're so excited about this series. This is going to be an amazing time going through the Armor of God. But we've got a challenge for today. Of course, we always have a challenge. All right, Miss Kendra, bring it on. What are we doing? All right. Have you ever heard of the game Two Truths and a Lie? I have. All right. Do you know how I heard of it? Because you called me this week and told me to put oh, yeah. together okay. a couple of true truths and a lie. So, well, they didn't know that, though. So tell but... them how does the game work. Okay, so it works because I have three statements, and I will tell you those three statements, and you have to guess which one is actually a lie. Okay. And then if you guess it correctly, then you would win. Okay, awesome. Or if I guess yours correctly, then I would win. Awesome. So, and I had us kind of get a few in play just in case that we have a tie. Sounds good. Because, you know, our score has started over. We have started over. Okay. So we're even, even playing field. Uh-huh. All right, you ready? Yes. Let's do this. All right, I'm ready. I've got my stuff here. Ready All go. right, ladies first. Oh, well, thank you. Okay, number one. I was a widow once. Do you know what a widow is? Mm-hmm. Okay, just want to make sure. Number two, I played an angel who couldn't sing. Okay. Number three... I won two years at the state Bible drill. She was a widow once, figuratively, clearly, because I know um, her husband, and he is still alive. So I'm going to go with, what was the middle one again? I played an angel who couldn't sing. I'm going to go with that. I'm going to go, she was a, a singless, singless? A voiceless, <laughs> a voiceless angel. <laughs> That's not the one. Oh, what was it? Uh, it was actually, I won two years at State Bible Drill. You did not win two years at State Bible Drill? No, you I only lied. won one year at State You lied Bible. about winning State Bible Drill. Yeah, I'm surprised you didn't pick I was a widow. <laughs> Why would I pick you were a widow? Because you would think that that was the lie. Yeah, but I figured it was like a, an actor in a play. It actually something. was. It was very good. Yes, very good. I played Witter Bronson oh, in my ninth go. grade play. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So I did okay. not get a point, Miss Kendra. She has a point. Okay. She she duped me. All right, here we go. I grew up on a farm. Did you know that? Okay. That's a true statement. Oh, uh, you might be trying to it tease is. me. I though. grew up on a farm. Okay. Here's three facts about my farm. Uh, I had a horse that knocked me off of it using a low branch. Oh. It was mad at me. It ran under a low branch. <laughs> I had a pet chicken named Nugget. <laughs> That's kind of funny. <laughs> and on the farm, we had two peacocks. Two peacocks. Two peacocks. Hmm. I know peacocks can be on farms. Having a chicken named Nugget's kind of funny. It's so funny, I think it might be true, though. And then the first one, the horse knocked you off. I don't know if you're that much of a horse rider. I'm going to go with that one as a lie. I made the horse mad, and horses can tell, like, height of objects, and it ran, lowered its head, and knocked me off using a branch. So oh. I used to ride horses all the time, Miss Kendra. I didn't so know that because my family rides horses. So there you go. I did yeah. not. I had lots of chickens. Never one named Nugget. Oh, but so that, was that would awesome be thing. a really cool chicken's name. <laughs> chicken Nugget. Nugget. So uh, <laughs> okay. we both have a point. I know we both have a point. Okay. All right, all right. So here we go. Um, I'm adopted. Okay. All right. Uh, my grandpa was the first person to grow cotton in his backyard in Dallas. Okay. And roller coasters were my favorite ride growing up. Okay. Um, I do know that you were adopted. Yes. Um, it's very specific about your grandfather and cotton, so I'm going to say that's true. I'm going to say roller coasters were not your favorite ride. That's correct. And they're still not my favorite ride. I don't like, I'm terrified of roller coasters. All right. So, very good. You get... All right, so I've got points. I got two points, and you've yes. got one. Yes. Awesome. Yes, Here we go. Right. Okay. Uh, when I was a kid, I played sports. Okay. That's a true statement. That's okay. not. <laughs> I was like, I'm yes. just giving you context behind okay. Okay. my okay. true truths in life. I did play sports. Uh, in track and field, I threw the discus. Okay. Which is like a really heavy frisbee. Mm -hmm. I threw you that. Spin around. They spin. Yeah, you spin around and okay. throw it out back in your hand. Okay. Uh, in in high school, I played football, but I only played in one game, and it was the last game of the season. That's kind of sad. Yeah. Uh, coach's choice. No, oh. not mine. I would have chosen <laughs> to play more. Apparently, I wasn't that good. Um, and I was on the wrestling team in high school. Hmm. All about sports. I'm going to say the football was a lie. Football I think you probably lie. played in more games because you're a buff guy and stuff. So. Yeah, well, one might think 
But if you've ever seen the movie Rudy, I was like Rudy with no heart. I was just getting beat up a lot. I played in two plays in the last game. And so it was pretty sad. But I stuck it out and I didn't quit. Uh, I was actually not on the high school wrestling team. Oh, okay. Yeah, it was not on Did not wrestle. So there you go. Okay. So that gives me three points. Okay, we got one more. One more to go. All right, here we go. I've met Richard Simmons. Okay. Do you know who that is? Sweating to the oldies. That's right. He's a really old guy. Right. I don't know if he, is he still alive? <laughs> I don't know. But anyway. I think he is. He was a big icon in the 80s exercise mm-hmm. dude. Um, I've been to Disneyland and Disney World. Okay. And I've been to Wyoming. Disneyland, Disney World, Wyoming. Richard Simmons, again, is a very specific person. And so I'm going to say that you did meet Richard Simmons. I did, actually. On um, a plane. On a plane. Yeah. And then been to Wyoming or Disneyland and Disney World. I'm going to say you went to either Disneyland or Disney World, but you didn't go to both. Actually, I have been to both. <sighs> On my plane to Disneyland was where I met Richard Simmons, Ooh, actually, to California when I was little. Okay. And then Disney World, I was eight. So, and But I've never been to Wyoming, but I would love to go to Wyoming. So if, you're, if anybody's wanting to give away a trip to Wyoming... She'll take it. Yes. Okay, awesome. So you have two. Mm-hmm. And you have three. And I have three. So here we go. Okay. I love to swim. Okay. That's a statement of fact. Okay. <laughs> okay. I love to swim. One time in a lake, I swam under a pontoon boat from one oh. side to the other side, all the way under the water. Wow. Um, one time in a lake, I kicked a boat propeller and had to get stitches in my left foot. Ouch. And one time in the ocean, I saw something swimming along. And I went and swam next to it and found out that it was a big shark. That I swam next to a shark in the ocean. Hmm. I don't think you would want to swim by a shark. I think that's the lie. It is not true. But I did see something swimming in the ocean. So I grabbed the goggles from my sister and I took off after it thinking and hoping it was a shark. (laughs) And it was a big gar that had made its way in from the fresh water, the brackish water into the ocean. And so it was Uh to my dismay. (laughs) <laughs> so they three to three. Awesome. All right. Well, there you go. So we actually tied for our first challenge. And I know ties aren't always the best, but here's the deal. We have now five more weeks. So we will not tie coming out. Somebody will be the definitive champion of our challenges going through <laughs> the next six week challenges. So maybe it'll be me. Maybe it'll be you. Or maybe it could be you. Maybe. We'll see. Either way. We'll be happy, right? We'll be happy. All right. right. We are going to dig into the armor of God today. Now, some of you are saying, what is the armor of God? That doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So we're going to dig into what the Bible says about the armor of God. And then we are going to encourage you to memorize this scripture with us. So every week at the beginning of our study, we're actually going to read and start working on memorizing this verse in Ephesians. It's found in Ephesians chapter 6, verses 14 through 16 says, stand your ground, putting on the belt of truth and the body armor of God's righteousness. For shoes, put on the peace that comes from the good news so that you will be fully prepared. In addition to all of these, hold up the shield of faith to stop the fiery arrows of the devil. Put on salvation as your helmet and take the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. That's right. Now I'm going to give you some background, some some content on how this was written. Paul, the Apostle Paul, was actually under arrest at this time. And so he's chained and looking up at the guards that are keeping him secured during this time period. And he has nothing to do but write letters and look at these soldiers. And God gave him this image of, of how these soldiers were dressed and how they used these different pieces of armor to protect them and how they worked in protecting the soldiers And then he correlated them to some spiritual attributes of God and how they protect us spiritually at the same point. It's an awesome, awesome analogy. So we're going to dig into these. And the first is the belt of truth. So first thing we're going to do during this series, we're going to look at how the Roman soldier used this particular piece of armor to protect him. What was its function? And then Miss Kendra is going to show us how that spiritually protects us and how that works with us. So let's get into the belt of truth. I know when we think of a belt, it's just merely to hold up your pants, but that is not the belt that the Roman soldiers wore. See, the Roman soldiers, they had long tunics that went down past their knees. Well, when it was time for them to actually enter into battle, they would pull their tunics up and get it up past their knees, and that would let them move a little quicker, be a little more agile, and their belt was used for that. They could pull it up, cinch the belt down, and would keep it away from their legs and make them more agile, make them able to fight a little bit better. The other thing that the belt did is it held their scabbard. Now, a scabbard is the holder that their sword would go into. If they didn't have their belt, 
they would have no place to put their sword. So it was not only an offensive weapon because the belt helped get their get their pants, if you will, their skirt, their tunic up out of the way so they could move. It also held their sword, but it also had another function. It had strips of leather that would hang down protecting them and uh, it was almost armor in that way. So it worked offensively to help hold their sword, um, pull their pull their tunic up. It was defensive in the fact that it had strips of leather that protected them during battle. But it also, and this is a cool part, it attached to their breastplate as well. So as their breastplate would hang over, which we're not talking about today, but understand that the belt of truth, if they didn't have that, everything else wouldn't work properly. So the belt was really, really important to a Roman soldier. And what was really cool about that is that was actually their very first piece of armor that they would put on, whereas for us, usually the belt's the last when we're getting dressed. But that's really cool because Paul mentions that it's a belt of truth. Isn't that what we need to put on first too? So in John 8, verse 32, it talks about, and you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. See, truth is foundational. It's like if you're building a home, you have to have that foundation or else everything else is going to crumble um, within your home. And so truth is foundational for us as well. And we know that God is the truth. He's the absolute truth. And having this foundation and knowing that he is truth, it helps us as Christians for any of the actions, any of the circumstances that we're going to face to make sure that we have a solid base. And so that we're not going to be confused and we're not going to be thrown off track if we know the truth and that God's word and God are the truth. Yeah, but I want you to realize, guys, truth is not your opinion or your feelings. See, if I ask Miss Kendra right now, Miss Kendra, is it hot in the room? No, I'm feeling pretty comfortable. Okay, but I'm actually kind of warm right now. See, that's an opinion. Mm -hmm. it's, it's her truth, if you will, but that's not the actual truth. Right. Truth is not based on how you feel. It's not based on, on what you think about an object. See, truth is based on the authority that God has that he has preset things that is true. And one of the things that he says is that, that he loves us, that he cares for us. So when we hear lies that say that we're worthless or we're not valuable, we can choose to believe that lie or we can choose to believe the truth that God has already said that I love you and that he called us his own and that we are his. See, we need to make sure that when we are choosing which truth to believe in, that it's not the truth of your friends. It's, it doesn't matter how many people voted something in or how many people agree with it. It doesn't make it true. What makes it true is if God's holy word, if God himself deemed that true, then we know that it is true. Mm -hmm. The other thing that sometimes lie plays into is lies that we tell our own self though. Lies that might say we're worthless. Lies that say, oh, I'm such a failure. I can't do anything right. But we know that God has told us that we are fearfully and we are wonderfully made. And so we don't need to listen to those lies that the devil would want to get us off track. We need to listen to God's truth. That's right. Sometimes lies are just things that we tell other people. So we want to make sure we're believing truth. If, if, if the belt of truth is what's the foundational garment that we wear to wage spiritual battles, we need to make sure that not only are we believing true things that are said from other people, but that we are projecting truth whenever we speak. See, there's a lot of times that when, especially when we're dealing with friends and maybe even when we're dealing with our parents, that we try to, we try to manipulate the truth and try to tell lies so that it sounds like truth. So maybe we don't get in trouble or maybe we think people might like us better mm -hmm. if we say things that are not true, but make them think that it is. We need to make sure that guys, as we're as we're getting ready for these spiritual battles, that we are living our life based and founded in truth. So make sure that we're telling the truth, even if that means by telling the truth, you're gonna get in trouble. You're gonna get in less trouble by telling the truth than if you tell a lie and get caught. Because then, now you're gonna get in trouble for whatever it is that you did, but you're also gonna get in trouble for lying about it. That's right. So today we've talked all about the belt of truth. So we want to see your belt of truth that you come up with at home. And please post a picture on our EVC Kids Facebook page. That's it. We're gonna to continue to work through the different armor of God and how they play together. The first one was a belt of truth. This week, I encourage you, when you have the opportunity to lie or to, to believe the lies that other people say, or maybe you say about yourself, guys, remember God loves you and he cares about you and that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. The Bible also says that the truth will set you free. 
Rest in that truth. Rest in the freedom that God wants to give you. We love you and we're praying for you. We'll see you later. Bye-bye. Bye.